Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to 32 Manias of Mike. We are at WrestleMania 14 from Boston. Ooh, guys, this one's a good one. This one is a good one. Um, <laughs> I, oh, we are we are in the Attitude Era, ladies and gentlemen, and hot damn. This WrestleMania spit some fire. Um, let, let's let's kick it off. Let's get first. Have to say this is the last WrestleMania for Shawn Michaels for a while. Mister WrestleMania is gonna be going away, as you guys know. Uh, during a casket match with Taker, Shawn injured his back really badly, and um, well, he had to go against someone at WrestleMania, and we'll get there. We'll get there. Don't worry. Um, but the first match. Holy shit. Um. It's a 15 team battle royal for the number one contendership. Yeah, 15 teams. All right. I'm going to break down these teams. All right. Are you guys ready? Going to break down all of these teams. We got two teams of Los Bariquas. That was Savio, Miguel, Jose Estrada, and Jesus. Two teams of Los Bariquas. The Truth Commission, Sniper and Recon, ironically eliminated by Kurgan, who wasn't even in the match. Uh, the team of Steve Blackman and Flash Funk. I don't know. I don't remember seeing Steve Blackman in the match. Uh, we have Chains and Bradshaw. Not sure why Chains was with Bradshaw or Bradshaw wasn't with Barry Windham. Uh, but Barry Windham actually eliminated um, Chains, even though he wasn't in the match. Go figure. Uh, we have the Nation of Domination, as, as of course we do. Uh, D'Lo and Mark Henry were were the guys in this match, and you know it's good to see D'Lo. It's good to see Mark Henry. Uh, we have the Quebecers. I didn't know they were still a thing at this point, but yeah, Pierre Roulette and Jacques Rougeau. I'm pretty sure this is right before they went to WCW. Um, we had the other team from the Nation. We had Farouk and Kama. Um, we had the Rock and Roll Express Hall of Famers this year. Rock and Roll Express: Ricky Morton, Robert Gibson. I believe this is their only WrestleMania appearance. And they got eliminated. Uh, they, they lasted a long time in the Battle Royal, actually. You know, not, not too, too long, but, you know, a decent time. Uh, headbangers. Of course, Mosh and Thrasher. Of course, you have headbangers in there. Um, you also have uh, Too Much. If you don't know who Too Much is, it's Too Cool before they became Too Cool. Brian Christopher and Scott Taylor. Scott Taylor, by the way, Sky Duhati, you will not recognize him because I sure as hell didn't until King started talking about Brian Christopher. Um, we have the DOA, Skull and Eight Ball. Of course, you guys know them as the Harris Twins, a.k.a. the hair on a couple of WrestleMania's ago, as the Blue Brothers. Um, we also have the Godwins, naturally. Phineas and Henry. Of course, you got to have the Godwins in there. And the uh, the last team to be eliminated was the new Midnight Express uh, bombastic Bob Holly and bodacious Bart Gunn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Attitude Era was a weird time, kids. And, of course, the winners with their new manager, Sonny, Legion of Doom 2000. Legion of Doom 2000. Don't know why they put the 2000 there. We're still in 1998. Still a bit away from 2000. And it's still Hawk and Animal, so they didn't change up the uh, the roster. That comes later, I think. Uh, but yeah, LOD becoming the number one contender. So I guess we'll see who they face later. Or will we? All right. And uh, the second match. Oh, whoa, what is this? It's a light heavyweight championship match. Do you guys remember the WWF LA heavyweight championship? I barely do. Um, the champion, of course, the only light heavyweight that we can possibly think of around this time, Taka Michinoku. And he was going up against Aguila, who unfortunately didn't even get an on-screen entrance. Poor Aguila slash S.A. Rios. I'll be looking forward to seeing you with Miss Congeniality sometime in the near future. But uh, Taka gets the win. Good match. Good match. Good fun match. A little bit of high-flying. You know, WWF... They're trying the cruiserweight thing. They're not great at it, but bless their hearts, they're trying. Now, uh, the next match here is for another new championship. 
the European Championship, y'all. Everything old is new again. We got a UK Championship now. We got a Cruiserweight Championship now. It's all coming back around. It's all coming back around, kids. Um, Triple H was the champion. Going by Triple H because this WrestleMania was DX rated, y'all. DX rated. Yes. Triple H with China going up against Own Heart. Oh, this is a fun match. It's really, really good. Uh, China is handcuffed to Commissioner Sergeant Slaughter so that she will not interfere. That doesn't work out so well as China eventually interferes. <laughs> she throws some powder at Sergeant Slaughter's face, hits Owen with a low bro. Pedigree, you know how this rolls. So of course, Triple H is going to win at WrestleMania. Of course he is. He has to, kind of, given what's going to happen the next night on Raw. But we will get there, maybe, if I talk about it. Uh, the next match, yet another mixed tag team match involving Luna Vachon. Luna Vachon and Goldust against Mark Marrow and Sable. Wow. Uh, this, this was a fun one. Um, it's interesting because at this point, Mark Marrow is no longer wild man Mark Marrow. He's, he's, he's. Heel boxer Mark Marrow, and everyone hates Mark Marrow, and everyone hates Goldust, and everyone hates Luna Vachon, except for my little sister who decided to dress up as Luna Vachon for Halloween. That's a true story. But everyone loves them some Sable. And I gotta give Sable credit. She brought it. She brought it in this match. Sable gives a power bomb to Luna, delivers a D uh, TKO, and they get the win. It was, it was a good time. Now, uh, before we get to this match, there's an interview with uh, Jennifer Flowers, who, if you follow the uh, the recent election, popped up back in the news. Like I said, everything old is new again. But Jennifer Flowers is interviewing uh, a little guy known as The Rock. Yeah, he's known as The Rock now. We've come a, we've come a long way from Rocky My VA, guys. And this is a history-making interview do you want to know why because the first of all the rock is out asked about being president which not gonna lie he's probably asked that now especially given the state of things but anyway um the rock just casually makes an offhand remark and then says if you smell what i'm cooking i think we stumbled on something there <laughs> yes, this is the first time The Rock says it probably, I'm going to say, his most most used catchphrase ever. I mean, it was the title of his song when he broke away from the, from the nation. But yeah, yeah, this happened. And then as the Intercontinental Champion, he was going in for a match with Ken Shamrock. And... This is a short, like, you know me. Normally, at WrestleManias, if something happens and the match is throwing at, like, a DQ finish or something like that, normally I will get pissed because I don't like seeing that at WrestleMania. WrestleMania is supposed to be defining. But this one worked really well because Ken Shamrock is a house of fire. Ken Shamrock beats the shit out of The Rock. Even taking some ugh, disturbing chair shots to the head. Seriously, this was in the time where you could allow chair shots to the head, and Ken Shamrock did not even he, he, he didn't even put a hand up. He just got plastered all the time in the face. Uh, but Ken Shamrock does get the win. He gets the rock to tap out. But oh, Ken Shamrock... He snaps, maybe because of too many blows to the head, but he doesn't release the hold, and so the referee reverses the decision and gives the match to The Rock via disqualification. It's actually kind of amazing, and The Rock keeps his championship. All right, now, these last three matches, uh, guys, it, it these are some last three good matches. We've got your tag team title match. First ever at WrestleMania, a dumpster match. 
Yes, a dumpster match. Um, Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie, who you may know as Terry Funk. They they just basically say he's Terry Funk. Against ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the Generation X up. The World Wrestling Federation proudly brings to you its WWE Tag Team Champions of the World, the Road Dog Jesse James, the Badass Billy Gunn, the New Age Outlaws. That will be the only time I'll do that. I promise. I just had to do it because it's their debut together, and you have to celebrate that because it's the Outlaws. The Outlaws are awesome. And God, th these guys... They just beat the crap out of each other again. It, it's a it's a hardcore match. The object is it's very similar to a casket match, except with a dumpster. You throw your opponents in, you shut the lid. It's basically it. And um, basically they, they fight to the back. They fight away from the ring. And this is a first, but not the last time this will occur. Mick Foley wins a championship with the aid of a forklift. Uh, Terry Funk and Mick Foley load the outlaws onto a forklift, lift them up, and dump them into a dumpster in the back. And they close the lid and put the uh, forklift on top, holding it down. So Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie are your new tag team champions. This changes the next night on Raw. So we go back to the outlaws. But something else important happens there, you know, X-Pac coming back, Triple H, you know, Shawn Michaels going away for a while, so we got a new DX. Anyway, anyway, moving on. Now, you guys have probably noticed I haven't mentioned The Undertaker yet. The Undertaker has a pretty big match this WrestleMania. I'd say, I dare say it's his most defining match at WrestleMania thus far. Easily, hands down. Because he's about to do something he never said he said he would never do. Fight his own brother Kane. That's right. He's fighting Kane, yeah, guys. Kane's WrestleMania debut. But more importantly, it's Pete Rose's WrestleMania debut. Before the match, Kane tombstones Pete Rose. And you know what? They call Pete Rose a future Hall of Famer, and technically they are not wrong. He is in the WWF Hall of Fame. WWE. Same thing. But yeah, uh, Taker versus Kane. Well, I mean, obviously, you know who wins, but it's a good match. It's really, really good. It takes three tombstones to take down Kane. Three. Kane's a made man from this first match at, at Mania. He's a made man. That's, that's the reason Kane's still around today. I mean, we don't know who's in the Andre Battle Royal yet, but Kane's probably in it. <laughs> But yeah, uh, Taker and Kane, awesome. Definitely got to check it out. And now we move to the main event. Uh, the Royal Rumble winner, Stone Cold Steve Austin. The WWF champion, the heartbreak kid, the leader of Degeneration X, Shawn Michaels. And the special outside enforcer, the baddest man on the planet. Iron Mike Tyson. That's right. Mike Tyson, you guys. And Mike Tyson, the, the video package for this is fantastic. First, it shows Austin getting in Tyson's face. Austin and Tyson, Austin and Tyson. You ruined it, damn it. Like all that stuff. Then it shows Shawn Michaels getting in Mike Tyson's face. And one of the most classic images of all time. Sean pulling off the WWF shirt to reveal a DX logo shirt. Then they're they're crotch chopping all over the place. Mike Tyson saying, "You are heartbreak." <laughs> like he calls Shawn Michaels heartbreak, which is the best categorically. They even show like this thing that they were doing a, a pre WrestleMania workout in the middle of Fennel Hall, I believe. <laughs> and Shawn Michaels and Mike Tyson are kissing the forehead of Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's the best. The match, I know if you like talk to Austin, like if you listen to Austin talk about, it, you listen to Shawn Michaels talk about, it, they don't like this match. Do I think we could have gotten better from them? Absolutely. Me personally, as a Shawn Michaels fan, this is one of my favorite Shawn Michaels matches because, especially knowing how much pain he's in, like, 
like when you find out afterwards how much pain he was actually in during this match, he's he's like a rock star in this match for going for doing as much as he does in this match. It's so good. It's so much fun. Um, the bit with. Tyson turning at the end, joining Stone Cold, counting the three count, then knocking Sean out. It's all of it's good, you guys. All of it's really, really good. And of course, the Austin era has begun. All right. Um, yeah, but that that's that's it for, for this WrestleMania. WrestleMania 15. This is the first WrestleMania I do not remember where it's from. I don't. I've been trying to think of it. I did not want to look it up. I've been 14 for 14 so far. I want to say maybe it's in Detroit. I'm probably wrong. When I watch WrestleMania 15, I will see if I'm right. And I'll let you guys know, or you can let me know. Um, feel free to tell tell me what you guys think of WrestleMania 14 or my review on WrestleMania 14. Hit me up at MadMike4883. Hit me up in the comments below in this YouTube feed. Or hit us up on Facebook, Wrestling Mayhem Show, or at Mayhem Show on the Twitter machine. Use the hashtag MM. And, um, yeah, so for Mad Mike, I'm Mad Mike, and this has been 32 Manias with Mike. Break it down!